Hey, it's Phil from Euroheat, and today I'd like to give you a little bit of help when selecting a heat pump. I want to give you a bit of help because I often see people confused and often disappointed in the future when they make a poor heat pump selection. And the reason they make a poor heat pump selection is there's only a limited amount of data that they can choose uh, their heat pumps on that are given by each manufacturer. And so the most common uh, way to compare and the piece of data that every heat pump manufacturer gives is generally the COP. And the COP stands for the coefficient of performance. So what that means is, let's say in heating mode, so sorry, COP is for heating uh, and EER is for cooling, but we're gonna talk about COP. So COP uh, means that for every one kilowatt of electrical input, how much uh, energy output are we going to get? So if we have a COP of three, that means for every one kilowatt of electrical input, we're going to get three kilowatts of heat output. So that's a 300% efficiency, which is pretty good, that's great. You'll notice that some say three, COP of 3.2, 3.5, 3.8, 4.1, 4.6, .1, some are even above five. So you would think that the, the higher number, the better, right? And, and you're right, but it's only if you're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges. So it depends on the testing conditions. Now, unfortunately, there is no sort of worldwide standard on how they should be tested and compared. There are some standards, like there's a British standard, European standard, there's even an Australian standard, but no one really follows it when they're stating their uh, heat pump uh, efficiency. So it's actually all about temperature. Now, usually most people deal with air to water heat pumps, but the same thing applies to water, water heat pumps or uh, geothermal heat pumps. And so most of the time we're dealing with air to water heat pumps, but the same applies to water to water heat pumps and also geothermal heat pumps or ground source heat pumps. And what matters is uh, the temperatures on the input side of the heat pump and on the output side. And so if we're talking about the air to water heat pump, we're talking about the air temperature, which the heat pump is exchanging energy with, and then also the water temperature on the output side. So what temperature of water is it producing on the output side? Now, generally you'll find that uh, a lot of heat pump manufacturers will state A7 slash W35. And what that means is they're saying if the ambient air temperature is uh, seven degrees outside and the water temperature that we're producing is 35 degrees then the COP will be let's say 3.5 now this is perfectly okay that's perfectly fine but what you'll notice is that a lot of manufacturers or uh, sales organizations distributors that are selling these heat pumps they might state uh, atmosphere 15, water temperature 35. So then all of a sudden they have a COP of 4.2 or some even go crazy and they go up to air temperature 20 uh, and, and water temperature of 35. So their COP is rising, but it's, well, if you compare that to a, if, uh, an air temperature seven, water temperature 35, and an air temperature 20, water temperature 35, of course the air temperature 20 is gonna have a higher COP because it's so much easier to pull heat out of 20 degree air than seven degree air. So what you have to make sure is that when you're comparing these heat pumps, that you compare the COP, it's on the same level. So let's say A7 water 35. Now, let me tell you about uh, what other factors affect this. So let's say you choose a heat pump, which has a COP of four at air temperature of seven and water temperature of 35. Now that's, that's great, that's, that's a good heat pump. But what you'll find is that your system, your heating system on the other side, say your uh, fan coils or air conditioning system or your floor heating or your wall heating or your radiator heating, they don't actually work that well with 35 degree water. Now that's not saying they can't, but because most systems are unfortunately just slapped in, what happens is that they actually need a higher temperature so that they work okay. And so that means that your heat pump won't actually be uh, producing 35 degree water. At the end of the day, for it to actually feel warm inside, you might need 50 degree water. And so if the heat pump is producing 50 degree water, it's much harder to do this compared to 35 degree water. So your COP drops down and you might find the COP to be 2.3 at the end of the day. So it's not only important to have 
the right heat pump with a good COP, but it's also important to have the system designed really well inside so that it can actually function on these low water temperatures. So what you actually need to do is you need to start not with the heat pump, but you actually need to start with the system. And let's say you're involved in the design process, you need to make sure that the system is designed well by someone experienced so that it is efficient, so it can use these low water temperatures. If the system has already been designed or it's been designed by someone else or for whatever reason you're not involved in that part, you should find out from the system designer what the design water temperature is. And if they do say 50 degrees, maybe question it. If it is, that's okay, but just make sure you pick the right heat pump according to this design temperature. So another thing you need to watch out for when looking for your heat pump is in the manufacturer's data, you need to make sure that the COP actually includes not just the compressor, but also the fan and the pumps because they consume electricity as well for the heat pump to operate and for it to transfer the energy. So a lot of heat pump manufacturers will actually only sneakily state the COP of the compressor without anything else. So the compressor, yes, it might have a COP of four uh, at atmosphere seven and water temperature 35. But then when you take into account, say the fan, which is for an air to water heat pump, the fan might consume uh, 500 watts as well. So that means that your COP is already being reduced. And then there is also your pump on the hydronic side, which needs to transfer the energy from the heat exchanger uh, in the heat pump, the refrigerant to water heat exchanger, and needs to transfer that energy either into your storage tank or into the system. So this also needs to be accounted for. And a lot of manufacturers don't include this. So make sure that this is included. So the last thing you need to know about heat pumps and COP is how they actually collect energy affects the COP as well. So you can have your air to water heat pump, which is the most common type, your water to water heat pump. So that's collecting energy from either a lake or underground water, an aquifer from a bore, or your ground source or geothermal where it's exchanging energy with the ground. Air to water out of these actually has generally the lowest efficiency. And why that is, is because generally when it's hot and you need cold water from the heat pump, the air is also hot and the inverse is also appropriate. So when it's cold and you need heating inside, the air outside is actually cold as well. So that means that it's, it, it's sort of harder to pull that heat, let's say in winter, out of the air because it might only be seven degrees outside. Now with water and ground temperatures, they're pretty constant throughout the whole year. So they're actually great for, if you want, say cooling during summer, it's not going to be 35 degrees in the ground or uh, in your water source. It, it, it will be, let's say between 15 to 20 degrees. So it's much easier to pull that energy out of these stable, uh, stable temperatures, which are much closer to the temperature that you're trying to produce uh, for the system than with the air. So with air to water, generally you see three to four COP. Uh, water to water and ground to water, you can see four to 500% efficiency or four to five COP. So to recap, make sure you're comparing apples to apples so that you have the same uh, source temperature, let's say the air temperature, and the same output temperature of the water, say A7W35, which with each model of heat pump you're looking at. Make sure that they include not only uh, the compressor, but also the fan, if it's an air to water heat pump, or, or the pumps for the water. And don't forget that the efficiency varies for the type of heat pump you have. So for air to water, out of the three common ones, even though it's got still really high efficiency, it's got the lowest out of the three. So let's say uh, COP of three, maybe up to four. Ground to water and water to water have generally about four to five COP. So if you'd like help in choosing or designing and installing the right heat pump for your application, be it air to water, ground to water, geothermal, or water to water, or also importantly, you would like help in designing and installing the heating and cooling system for your building to make sure that the heat pump isn't overloaded, that it runs efficiently and it works for a long time, it doesn't fail early. Give us a call at Euroheat, we'd love to help you out. All it takes is a quick 15 minute chat to see if we're on the same page and whether we can work together.